It should should be. It should. Well, have it should. It, it shouldn't have. It shouldn't be that way. I mean, it's like just because well, you got a whole bunch of money and shit, that don't mean you can get away with shit yeah, without does. explanation. Yeah, yeah it, it does. does. Well, I know it does. But what I'm <laughs> saying is, it shouldn't. Yeah. That's well, what of, I said. It should things, not. A lot of things should or should not. Well, but yeah. Money that's talks, just, that's bullshit. bullshit walks. All day long. You always follow the money in America. Always. When always something doesn't make sense, follow, follow the, the trail money. of money. Like this. These crumbs here. If you're not sure, follow the trail. They're going to lead you back to. Lead you back to my weed stash? <laughs> okay. <laughs>
Yeah, that's good, but that that goes back to me. That goes back to the old thing of uh, because they knew he was a dummy. Well, you got it. You yeah, got yeah, they that question. Apparently, apparently, yeah. apparently um, they wasn't going by qualifications, education, well, 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 obviously. whatever. Yeah, they was just going by. This guy is a face that people know. Yeah. A blast from the past. Yeah. And it's like, well, no, he was never a football hero. Was he a football hero in Atlanta? Well, he, he played at Georgia. Yeah, university, but then he was living in Texas, wasn't he? And then well, they brought but, him but, back but, to but, Georgia. Well, let, well, let's go back. His football exports were at least 20 years ago. Yeah. So but he's still, a, he's still, it's like, there's, still, there's names that you mentioned that, you know, like Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson had to retire early because of the injury. Yeah. But now all of a sudden he's a resurgent. And you, they're talking about Bo Jackson. The dude wrote a book. They had a documentary. Yeah, but he stutters. And? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he stutters, stepped around uh, Brian Bosworth. No, no, yeah. people <laughs> see, right into it. But see, that was one of the most disappointing yeah. things for me is, yeah, Bo Jackson was hitting the home runs, making the touchdowns. They did an interview ball. with him, and the, and the guy can't say more. I mean, he's just like the dude that in uh, 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 Harlem Nights. The, 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 you know? Yeah. No, he didn't. Not anymore. But stuttering is not they the had version a, of it. They had, they had, they had, they had I, interviews I with him that. where he didn't that. stutter. And maybe he didn't stutter, doesn't stutter all the time. I don't know. I don't remember him stuttering. Who? Bo Jackson. Yes. Well, okay, my boss stuttered. Bob, you got okay. <laughs> Just because I this, <laughs> you got to tread softly because a lot of people stutter. Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, so I think it's very well, important. Saying, important what he's saying. That doesn't hinge on your intelligence. Well, I, 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 I was just saying. saying that that was for me. He he was a guy that I looked up to, but and when he did that to me, it, it kind of diminished the how I felt the visual it. thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but you, that's just, it still was, you gotta be careful. One of the greatest athletes in history. Who? Bo Jackson, who were we talking about? Did we, did we did change? We talking about Herschel Walker? No, no we, we changed from Herschel oh, we did. to Bo Jackson. Script? No, y'all said y'all was winging this, so okay, I'm letting yeah. you go. <laughs> I don't, so, you keep going back to Herschel. I was I brought up Bo Jackson as a name you know, that it's, it's his because career really, was decades because, ago, but he's still a face. Well, you know what? It didn't really matter. And he's just not into the politics of it all, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I I don't like chocolate. So that that was the thing with Herschel. He, he made me kind of go at. at experiment with chocolate again, you know, but it wasn't. There are other Negroes like Herschel yeah. that are doing what Herschel is doing. I understand. They've been doing it for a while. There are some... Right, but they, but, but they don't have the uh, profile. Okay, but who makes the profile? The media. Media. Okay, and... Th and who controls the media? <laughs> White folks. <laughs> See, and that's one of the problems now. Is With a we, lot of money. We don't have. We but don't Ye, control the media. Ye, Ye, Ye is crazy. He's That's just, the he's just, beyond crazy. He is just plain nuts. He's beyond nuts. Okay, wait. But then again, wait. How, how, are we how, talking how, about Kanye now, right? Because we done moved off of Herschel. But we're gonna circle keep, back. I, <laughs> you know how this goes. <laughs> don't bring it on. Because, home. because they're, <laughs> it's really, my question is: Are they the same person? I don't know. You've been trying to make them well, be the I same person. I don't think so. We cosmic until at least 10 minutes <laughs> into it. <laughs> it took a while, but so. it's about on time. So anyway, yeah, um, a, a lot of people think he's crazy. And a lot of people think that he uh, generates controversy when he has something big going on. Right. And, and, and okay. I, Right, um, that's that, that's what I was getting to, yeah. because it, he's crazy like a fox. Because if you really think about it, he goes in, he gets an invite from Trump. He goes in. He supposedly brings a guy that Trump supposedly doesn't, doesn't know. know. But yeah, 
Uh, right? So uh, now everybody's talking about it. What are they talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's out of Trump's playbook. I don't care if it's bad press, it's just press. I don't right. care what you're talking about me about. You're talking about me. me. That's that narcissism. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and that's that narcissism. And 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 Trump Trump said it's like if it if it goes right, then I'll take all the credit. But if it doesn't go wrong, I'll find somebody to blame. I was just no. paraphrasing. But and that's, and what, also, that's what he said. I think something important to keep in mind, because I look at Kanye and yes, why I'm like, eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have to also think about Dave Chappelle. After Chappelle, after he left Chappelle's show and all this stuff, he was the crazy one. We all said, yep, he's crazy. Not he me. wasn't. We just didn't get it. He was on a different level of the shit he was I, dealing with. I, I, and we all said, oh, you're crazy. So I can't help. But even though I don't be agreeing with stuff Kanye says, I can't help but think, oh, he might not be crazy. He might just be privy to stuff we can't see. And for instance, y'all see the stuff with Balenciaga going on now? With who? Uh, Balenciaga. So it's a, one of them high fashion clothing brands that Kanye beat. He was talking about them. Right. And he was like, y'all, we need, y'all got we to stop messing with them. But he never really said details. So apparently it just yeah. came up today. Uh, Balenciaga just released a fashion line for kids. Oh um, yeah, they got these little uh, like backpack teddy bears, but they're in bondage, S and M with the chains yeah, and yeah. whips, all of that. Then and they did a yeah. photo shoot where they have like Balenciaga products on uh, in an office on a desk, right. and they're, it's laying on these papers. Somebody who's into this, they zoom in and try to read what the paper said. Apparently, it was the case file for some uh, po child porn yeah. case. Yeah. So and all part of, the, of their advertising campaign? Yeah. Yes. And they're, they're they, literally, and yes. Balenciaga had to come out like, oh, we're sorry. You know, they did no, the whole... They, they blamed it on their on their uh, uh, publicist or... or no, that's product PR. placement. That's straight up product placement. Yeah, so yeah, so it's things product. like that yeah. that, you yeah. know, yeah. people talk and say, yo, they say stuff, we'll be like, you're crazy. And then the truth comes out and then, and then like, okay, like, they, they wasn't yeah. crazy. That's why I just be slow to call people crazy now, but the, the famous whole, ones. Uh, yeah, but the whole <laughs> thing about, the whole thing about yay yeah is, it's always something super controversial, and it always when he's got something big going true. on. I don't, I don't at all. But he did <laughs> negate but, but that. But like you said, he did say like we got to stop messing with you know Balenciaga, whoever they are. And uh, when they when they had the clothing line, the little kids standing there with mm -hmm. leather and, and spikes and crap, you know, it was crazy. What the hell is that? Yeah. And then they said, oh, well, uh, you know, uh, it was our, our uh, PR firm or our marketing people or whatever. They just tried to blame it on everybody but them. Okay, that's a straight up lie because... Don't they have to approve? Being in production, one of the things you'll see is, let's say you get money from Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. but not Pepsi, right? Right. But you got a scene with a Pepsi bottle. You won't see the Pepsi later. You'll see no. the bottle. They'll turn it around. And your brain will associate it with Pepsi, but you won't see Pepsi. The, shape, yeah, the shape of the bottle. Yeah. Tell you. Those kind of accidents, they happen. It's an on purpose oops. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that mm -hmm. window accident. But that's kind of. Yeah. Weird. McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> hey, they have the Big Mac. He has the Big Mick. Different. <laughs> His buns have no seeds. No seeds. <laughs> no seeds. So, you know, I guess they can't grow. Uh, we talked yeah. about birthdays. Can I do a shout out? Sure. You can okay. do whatever you want. Y'all show. Sure. It's, it's, it's our show. Okay, I'm going to do a shout out. Today is uh, my best friend's birthday. So I'm going to do a shout out. So, hey, Lou, um, I know you're 85, but because you hate it when I tell the truth, we're going to assume you're 72 today. Can we agree on that? Okay. 72. Sure. That's, that's it a good, is. Yeah, that's, that's right. a good, yeah. So, you and I, a long time ago, had this agreement. That, I know what that is. It looks familiar. Don't give it away. <laughs> don't give it away. <laughs> it looks familiar. It looks familiar. That with either the revolution it hit or you turned 72, I was to dig this up. And since you're 72, I dug this up out of your bomb shelter. Blew the dust off it. Um, on behalf of Seattle, we appreciate you bringing this to Seattle. 
Some of us can handle it. Some of us were smart enough to stay away from it, but happy birthday, my brother. <laughs> happy birthday. Others, others of us were uh, inundated <laughs> with a major wall of it. <laughs> they were all empty. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were creating an art project. <laughs> but it was an art project. It was, it was, it was a major collage. And, and it was just rows and rows and rows and rows of it. They were empty, and only one of them had been outlined in fluorescent paint so that when we turned the black light on, it would glow. <laughs> yeah. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just in one bottle. All the rest of them were just there. There were some in the closet with Molotov racks in, racks well, in there. Well, you know, I when don't know about all that. Yeah, we were prepared. We had everything except the gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 we, and, we, and we drank the contents of the bottle. So, okay. but, uh, yeah. Good to see you, old fella. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> it's been a hell of a minute. But, uh, yeah, you know. But we're not going to do any product stuff, so. You know, no, 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 we can't, no. He ain't sent me a, a dime of I was about to say, but if y'all know anybody who wants the sponsor, y'all can start getting paid. <laughs> That's right. Well, I don't know, because oh. as much as that is, uh, was consumed by just some people I know, we kind of kept them in business for a while there, you know. Yeah, I, I, could, I couldn't hang for a long time. Well, no, I, uh, we, yeah, I, I think I did one bottle. One bottle? One bottle. You lazy lima bean <laughs> coconut. <laughs> when I was your age, I had to bottle in three bottles, three, three bottles. baby bottles. I, I, I right. know. I was there. Yeah, yeah, you were. I, I remember Monday nights coming over, and they would have bottles and bottles of Monday night, but Monday, Monday night football. football. Yes, indeed. And it was. I, it was I, new I, then. I would bring a quart of beer. It was new then. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I remember we used <laughs> yeah. to have quarts of beer instead of 40s. Remember pre-40s? We had them quarts. Oh, yeah, during the training years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they came out with the 40s. But yeah, we, there was a quart. You'd get a, a quart. And we'd go over to the store in Madrona. Yeah. And get, because I could buy beer there. And I could. And he couldn't. What? Well, without yeah. ID. Yeah. Oh, oh, they just, oh. they just, they just, they just, they just assumed that I was over 21. Maybe it was my mature demeanor. I think so. And then, and then, and then, and and then, then I, and then I would, the then I would say, ID, please. Let go. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Left it in the car. We were talking yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about that in the early yeah. episode. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's where you, you know, you try. Yeah. You just put it up there and you try, and if they say, well, where's your ID, you just fake like, yeah. damn it, left my wallet in the car. Let's start now. Okay. Okay, Lou and I were roommates way the back when. The birthday boy. Lou was from uh, Michigan. Michigan. He introduced the Pacific Northwest to this beverage. It didn't exist before he brought it out. It did, but we just was into other stuff. Yeah, I mean, legally, but... That's no, a, I mean... No other, 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 uh, yeah, alcohols. Yeah. Well, that's because, like you were saying, you were old enough to get it, so you could hang out I with the I wasn't old enough. I just happened to get look it. old enough. Yeah. And mature enough. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hang out with the winos like you on the street corners. No, this wasn't a street corner. This was at the house on Thirty Second and uh, Pine. And it was a great big old house and a bunch of people, it was like a commune, a bunch of people used to live there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they had a big, um, um, they had a wood carving of a wolf, actual size, in the yard. Yeah. And people would forget about it and get, you know, in altered states and run out and, then, and there was a wolf there. And then other people would fall over it, because it, but it was a big wolf in the yard. It's a park now. But it was a great big old house. It must have had about okay, 20 something, 20, 20 or more rooms. Because you could go upstairs and go out, and then there'd just it was be a, a mansion. room. Yeah, a yeah. converted mansion, that one. Yeah. yeah. It belonged to the parents of a kid that some of us went to school with. 
and apparently they were, um, they had another house, their parents lived in another house and they was living here and then a lot of other strange people just came in and didn't leave. That was back in the day when life was fun. Well, yeah. But now, okay. Life is still fun. Come on out, man. We're trying to carry you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was that house was there and um, for years, and then they finally tore it down and it became a park. Yeah, it is a park now. Yeah, right? it is. I can to get the pine, pine, pine or pipe one. Yeah, because it's north of Union. Yes. Yeah, because I actually lived across the street on the other end of the block from that place. Yeah. I remember the 1962 Columbus Day storm because I've never seen purple lightning before. Oh, well, hey, you know. A little was, filler. We're just doing a little it was filler in, it was in Gar get back. It was in Garfield's district, so. <laughs> it would have been I green if did. it was over in our district. Let's see what you did. Mm. So. Hey, you're back. You okay with Herschel? Let me ask you this. Then. <laughs> 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 the quickest <laughs> turn signal, the quickest 180. That was a U-turn if I ever seen one. We're back to again. Okay. Am I okay with it? Are you disappointed in Herschel, or are you just surprised by Herschel's move? Or? Well, it's 2022 headed fast toward 2023. In a and few weeks? Yeah, because... I, I am disappointed because uh, I thought Uncle Tom died a while ago. Mm -hmm. Based on what? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe the name died, but the <laughs> uncle didn't die. <laughs> the uncle didn't die. There's some place. Yeah, well, there's some yeah, yeah, still alive. I am <laughs> just disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed that it still exists. That 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 concept, that reality, still has a big place in this society. Um, I'm disappointed in the fact that he participated in it. And that's the thing. You know, because he could have said no. He could have said, I don't want, because all they were doing is using him and his name to try to beat another black man. Even he said, I will do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Now, they never have lied about their relationship with Mr. Walker. They've always said, we need to see. We need to yep. see. They never have tried to pretend like that's not what they needed him for. And the whole thing is, it was like, basically, he was kind of like a shill at a comedy show. Like a minstrel. You know, that's what well, I'm know, saying. I mean, I mean he is, he'll he just do whatever you say do and then reap whatever benefits he was promised. Yeah. You know, and that's it. But, I mean, it's like he... And, 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 and the reality is, not saying... I, I said Jay was crazy, but really, aren't he and Jay the same from different ends of spectrum? Nah, let me think about that for a minute. That's that, um, yeah. I don't know, though. Um, are they the same? I think in the aspect of maybe doing things for money, that would be it. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like, Ye at least says what he thinks more so than I think Herschel was saying what they think. Well, I... I don't think Herschel doesn't say what he thinks. I don't. <laughs> I don't think he doesn't say what he thinks. I think he thinks what he says, and he says what he does. I agree with you. Could I think be. he says what he thinks, but what he thinks it's Deluded. down here. Is I think. Okay, I've been taking notes of his speeches because I didn't understand them. Like, okay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, trying to I'm, I'm with you. I even sent a text out like, "FTF did he just say?" Because I don't understand it. Okay, the Green, the Green Party. I, once they get it together, more with the Green Party, we like our gas guns and cars, but we got a mission, so we're not worried about our gas guns and cars. Then he goes on and on. Then the next time, 
And yeah, I was watching this stupid ass show the other night about werewolves and vampires. Why well, you watch it? Wait a minute, don't get ahead. You know, <laughs> what does that say about me? And um, and I'm the vampire, or I'm the whichever one. The villain. I don't know. And, and he's saying what he believes, but look at the crowd he's talking to. He's mm -hmm. talking to people within his IQ level, and they love him for it. They're not trying to get smarter. They're not trying to get better. They're not trying to get nothing Tell me wrong. one thing that you've heard that the Republican Party has said they're going to do, and you go back as far, as many years as you want to, about unemployment, about anything. What have you heard they're going to do if, if they're elected, if they get to take over? Because I, and Mr. Producer, even you, you're the young man. This I don't. I don't. I don't uh, pay attention to Herschel Walker. I'm not gonna lie. Well, I tell you, I, <laughs> so I don't. I don't know one, anything about one him. One thing that I noticed though is like, if a Republican wins, everything is fine. But if a Republican loses, oh no, the the whole system's fucked up. That's straight out of the Spinkables playbook. That's that's exactly. I mean, it's like as long because there's been a lot of Republicans that were elected <coughs> in the midterms that said, oh, okay, I won, blah, 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 and went on about that business. Yeah. But then this one woman, I think in Nevada, she lost. So, hey, she's getting a lawsuit together because God. the, the yeah. election uh, process was flawed. Only in her case. Now, none of, apparently none of the other candidates felt this way. Democrat, Republican, whatever, none of, none of the others uh, had the money, I guess, to get a, a legal team together to do this, but I've noticed that even Trump, that greatest example, it's like he thought he was going to breeze on through and continue being what was happening, and then somebody put the brakes on this shit, and it's like, oh, no, no, that can't be right. That can't be right. The whole elect and and then not only, not only just a particular state, but he was getting all these different states and states where he thought he could um, win this whole thing, and state after state, the, the judges and, and, and the people who were overseeing it said, no, everything was fine. And so I just think that's some white people stuff. I think I don't necessarily no, no. go subscribe to Democrat, Republican, and which uh, as far as how each no, one I mean, will react, simply because right. I think the whole system, one, is rigged. Yeah. And two, the people at the top that are actually playing the game to get in these positions, when they lose their own mm -hmm. rigged game, they mm -hmm. throw a bitch fit. Yep. I think that's all it is. I don't think it's, all oh, Republicans do this. Well, I mean, that, no, everybody throws a fucking fit. But, that's, but, that, but that is the example that is uh, in front of us now. Yeah. And it keeps happening over and over. And, and just dealing with the political scene, that's the way it is. The whole overall scene, that's mm -hmm. also the way it is, because a lot of times the people that you work with, you know, you see something come down and, and oh, well, I didn't get fired this time, so everything's fine. But then all of a sudden, well, we're cutting back and you're gone. No, this whole thing is rigged. This whole, you know, so I mean, that's just the way it is. But politically, here's what I was just dealing with in that little yeah. microchasm. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, yeah. That's out of their playbook. Trump's grandfather telling you don't ever admit you're wrong. Oh, you ever yeah. back. That's out of his DNA. But the scary part is like what you just said. I believe what you just said. This is your generation. Mm -hmm. And I hear that a lot from young people. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time trying to convince young people to vote. But like what you just said, their pushback is, well, I don't see any difference. Right. And I can't tell them they're wrong. Because that just means we as old farts didn't do a good job in trying to get the young people, have them understand the importance of voting. Well, you know what? I, I personally understand the importance of voting, but in my case, when I look at it, I see the irony, the big irony. The irony is my grandfather was a businessman. He worked at a factory in North Carolina. He started first black cab company in our small town. He drove a new car every year. 
he was pretty well off. But in that meantime, he drove in that new car, those new cars, all over North Carolina to register blacks to vote because mm -hmm. they had the poll tax, they had this, they had that. Good but he, he was very adamant, I'm going to get these people to vote, right? When he died in 1960, the irony was he did all this work, he got all these awards, he never voted because he couldn't. Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. Not that's, because he didn't want the, to. Right, that's the yeah. irony. Yeah. So how, now I say I, I vote because he sacrificed his life for that. But what he said is right. I agree. And I've agreed, if y'all have listened to him over the years, I've always said that. I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, because I don't go. Mm -hmm. I agree <laughs> and disagree with things on both sides. So I'm not going to yeah. no, claim an allegiance. I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't have an allegiance to a particular party or a particular movement or whatever. The thing is, they send you out this voter's pamphlet and you look at it and you look at what the people say and if you agree with that person regardless of what party they're representing or not representing, yeah. if you agree with what they say, then you vote for them. But that's something that you have the freedom and the right to do in this country that in a lot of other countries isn't there. Yeah, but let me chime in here though. So here's the deal. with Because I also know the importance... Okay, I'm on the fence here. I understand the idea of the importance of voting. I completely get it. Again, my, my problem is watching this through my short years, um, it doesn't necessarily matter who is on the platform being voted for yeah. and who's voting. It, it ma what matters is the interest in that particular region or if we're talking presidential, um, it matters the business interest because it, it's all mm -hmm. about the money to mm -hmm. me. I, healthcare is still not free, and it's health. It's mm -hmm. free everywhere but here. Right so here. that is, I, I don't trust you on GP. It's like, I, I, you're not here to help. You're about the money. So with that, when you have some of these um, people get into position, it's like, mm -hmm. I'm here. You heard what I said. I said all these things, but we have proven track records that politicians don't keep 70% of the promises of stuff they say, they but they can't. do get the paycheck. Because they can't. Yeah, okay, so, again, I just find, like, why... F I pay attention, mm -hmm. yeah. but I don't put all my eggs in this basket because mm -hmm. I'm not a part of the game. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way for me to, and I don't want to get into that particular part of the ecosystem of this country. It's just like, y'all, it's... But it's just, it's just like term limits. They was they was hot to trot. <coughs> when when Roosevelt won a third term, mm -hmm. they was hot to oh no, we can't have this. No, no, no. Yet all of them have been reelected eight, ten, no twelve, sense. fifteen times. And they're not oh no, we don't want term limits. Well, if this guy's eighty years old and he's been in Congress for 40 years, and he's and and that's every two years. That means he's won 19 or 19 more elections than this first one. Yeah, yeah. But he can run again, and again, and same thing with this Senate. That's six years. That's it. Patty Murphy's been in there 30 years. Well, yeah. It ain't shit changed. So yeah. why you but, keep? <laughs> but the whole point is, it's like she's been reelected five times. Five times six is 30. But I also think that you, we could play it into this, especially here in America. Mm -hmm. Us as people, it can be as little as, I know I need to vote, what's the name I recognize? And that's it. Yeah, that's the name. name. And then so, yeah. I'm not, name we not off the hook. Right. <laughs> you know. Name recognition. Yeah, I agree because you know what I do know, this last election was a couple of, whenever it was, we voted. I got the little pamphlet. It was like a week, two weeks ago? I went no, to a pamphlet and I read it. First November, about four then weeks ago. I opened it, I went November. to the ballot. Three weeks ago. And said, oh. And I went back to the pamphlet and oh, black, black. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I did that. That's what it's come to. Yeah, I did that. But yeah. I mean, and, I, and, I, and I don't normally 
I haven't normally done that, but this time I did. Yeah. Well, that's a step up from writing in DJ Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> or these nuts. I got it down. These nuts, nuts. nuts wasn't on the ballot. <laughs> so, CJ, yes. they write in. Do you think that? Because what you said, I actually totally agree. I like your grandfather's story. I love that because mm -hmm. that's reality. Reality. And so that is a re realistic way of explaining the non-voting, other than. I'm just too lazy to vote, or I don't. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't have a ride. The two-party <laughs> system. <laughs> have you thought about this? It's time. It doesn't work. I don't think it works at all. I don't so think it really worked in the beginning. So right? for your age now, which is the new younger voters, uh, or alert voters, break up the two-party system. Well, they've been trying to, but every time the splinter groups just don't seem to work. Well, but you don't ever give up just because. Yeah, no, be, be, because, because no, I, but the that's folks what I'm saying. You, you got people that are running independent. You got people that are running libertarian, and they're you know, but not enough people are willing to back those parties or those offshoots. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I think, uh, given the time that we're in now. Um, and I think it's an overused phrase, but the social media age. Mm -hmm. um, now, I think that when you think about political parties, Democrat and Republican, um, they are very much set in stone, you know, planted in the ground. You know, mm -hmm. they got roots. Yep. And they, they the have beginning. a system of how they do things. When you talk about this younger generation coming up and way more, I'm not going to say more opinionated, but it's plastered across the world. Uh, broadcast to the world, way more opinionated, way more outspoken about certain things. Um, but I think with that, <coughs> now there is no cohesion. Mm -hmm. There's not enough young people that approve of what the Democrats or the Republicans stand for to mm -hmm. rally behind that and say, we're going to change this and make it our new thing. I think now it's to the point where everybody's like, fuck that, I'm just going to do my own thing. And I'm going to vote my personal interest and not care about, you know, maybe aligning myself with other people so that we can make a big move. It's, it's simply about what I see in my, uh, you know, atmosphere around me. Um, and that's what uh, I think people are doing. And I think a side effect of that is not voting at all. It's well, you I have a lot of people yeah. that are lo a lot yeah, of young people that are I making like it, ridiculous amounts of money. Yes, yeah. and they're insulating and isolating themselves from the whole thing because they have enough money to do so. Yeah, and you have, I mean, and I'm not gonna lie, I I absolutely would. I, sure, I yeah. would insulate my. I mean, I probably if I was a multimillionaire, I probably wouldn't live here in in this country. Um, I would be so far removed from a lot of the political things that seem to be on everybody's agenda uh, every day. And, 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 and political, I'm using that as a wide spectrum. I'm talking racism. I'm talking prejudice. I'm just talking the, the stuff that doesn't need to happen. But people do because they're bored, they're angry, whatever. And again, you trace it all back to money. Money problems will be the root of all your other problems most of the Usually. time. Um, and it just seems like such a rigged system that if I was able to get out financially, I absolutely would. God, but I don't want to play. But here's you know. a question. I get it. I get but here's I a question. Where would you go? Cut that off. Cut that off. Actually, it, it was. I don't know when it cut off, but okay. I was like, cut that off. Right. No, no, this is a. Yeah. This is, but this I'm, a, I'm gonna go wherever it is. I mean, yeah. Where, yeah. Where, yeah. where, where would you? I mean, where, where are you even considering? I off, love off the record. Uh, yeah, um, Spain, um, Costa Rica is just a place I really just love there. Um, yeah, I hear good things about it. Mm -hmm. I was talking to now. There's places I also. If I could, well, no, if I have kids, I would want to sit somewhere. But if I had no money to go, I would just travel. At that point, I, I'll spend a month here, a month there, there you go. and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, so the, the, somewhere nice, though. I don't need all this stuff. I don't know. These <laughs> folks, these, you know, I was talking to a woman the other day, and she was talking about Morocco. I have a friend. Well, I, got, mm -hmm. I don't know a couple people from Morocco, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, I mean, just... just wasn't, the, wasn't one of your teachers from Morocco at Franklin? Just places. Was that no, it was... Her name was Nora. She was in tribes with me. She's from Morocco. Oh, yeah. There's, uh... 
I mean, I've been hearing a lot of different places that people are saying, you know, yeah. instead of here, I would yeah. rather, yeah. you know. But it I mean, the whole thing is, class with, uh, you Andrew. still end up with problems. Because the teacher invited me to lunch yeah. with her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jesse <laughs> loves <laughs> Belize. But the thing is, most <laughs> most people want to come to America. This is why they die, they drown, but they, they suffer. But they wasn't raised here. No, but they want no, to come but. here. They don't, but, but, but wait, 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 wait. But they wasn't raised here. Are we back on together? Oh no, we're on. I, I, I left it on. Yeah. Well, we what we're what they weren't raised here, and so they don't realize there's a different set of problems. But it's a better place than where they're from, in most yeah, cases. Right, 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 right. But I mean, yeah. the thing is, you know, they come in here. It's just like um, all the people that were having so much trouble. He brought all these people over from after Vietnam, from Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, whatever, and they're getting what they know how to do. They know how to fish. Well, they go send to Texas. Well, who are they up against? They're Texas fishermen. Yeah. So it was a whole different mm -hmm. dynamic. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it is. It, and, it, but it, I mean, it's, it's still changed. one of the best like, places uh, to be. We just got back from South Carolina, and our relative's place where we went for a brief visit there, because we was in a hotel, right? I was told 20 years ago, when the relative was 17, mm -hmm. you wouldn't catch a black face in the area they were in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just 20 years ago, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. 80s. Yeah. Or, or, or the early 2000s. I was about to say 20, no. And, and and there was, and there, but, there was, but there was, I remember back in the day, they would build a development here for white folks only and a development here for black folks only. And we were thinking that's a step up because you see they don't even let us in and consider us. You know, because when we were kids, you know, we had, we had a, a, white amusement park and a black amusement park. Let me ask you a question, you just, know, just on that. Do y'all do y'all agree or disagree with segregation? That's actually a hard question. It is a very hard question. question. I think about it. It's, it is. It's a hard because in my experience, I remember my experience, you were, you were talking about how the things were in Carolina and stuff. I'm from Louisiana. And things were so different in my life there as in my life here. But there, it was, it was kind of weird because our education was segregated. But when I came to the Seattle School District, I had already had a bunch of the shit they was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it, they talk about separate but equal, but in that case, it was separate, but it wasn't equal. Right. We were... You know, actually, right. and I and you know, you don't hear you hear about like, oh well, the education system in the South and blah blah blah. But it was, it was, it's it's a very hard question because we were fine. All of our all okay, of yeah. Kids. So let me let me rephrase you the know? question. Y'all grew as adults. I understand y'all went through stuff, but as adults looking back in retrospect, do you think segregation was a good idea? I think it, I I think it was a. Uh, I think it was a good idea. And the reason I think it was a good idea is because, like I said, when, when we came, when we moved here from, from uh, down south, I was used to everybody, every business person I saw doing everything <laughs> was black. When I got up here, that wasn't the case. And there was folks who were going, hey, waving on the corner. I have this business, come and support me. And, and that was weird to me. Mm. I'll tell you what else was weird. Now, here, here is the weird thing. We move up here, right? Segregation, segregated system, everything segregated, neighborhoods, everything, right? Next door to us was a little white boy and a little white girl. We come outside, they come outside, and they go, hey, come on over. Us? <laughs> Come on in the house. Us? <laughs> I mean, that was weird. I mean, that, that took some getting used to. So, so you, you think you agree with segregation? I think segregation was good because I think it developed 
character. And I think, in my case, looking back, it developed business people and people who were got edu got were interested in getting educated and got educated. Yeah, but that's what that's what I think. So, a question: When you say segregation, do you mean legally or just de facto segregation? Things just happen. Um, happen. I, I I think I do mean legally. I'm, I'm talking. Well, I don't know. I think my mind initially when I asked this, I was thinking about school. Um, school was being segregated. Mm -hmm. um, but and obviously that don't trickle off into everyday life because I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily disagree with segregation. Um, no. But I also see why it's completely dope. Wait, hold on, let me make sure I'm saying this right. I don't agree with everybody, I don't necessarily disagree with everybody being separated. But I absolutely see the value in everybody coming together. Um, so that's why it's, it's interesting to me. Um, I definitely, for lack of a better word, definitely feel like I'm more cultured having grown up around a lot of different races. At the same time, I have always yearned and longed for that kind of HBCU experience that all, yeah. only all black people around me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never really had that, you know what I mean? And, you know, so I do feel like I've missed the part of like, I'm not saying I want to go back to segregation, but seeing all black people is pretty well, dope. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure at the time of segregation, when all the black people got together, it wasn't the same bullshit that it is in 2022 when black people get together. Somebody got to get shot. And I don't like that. That's yeah, why I don't go around the niggas. Right. They get cut back then. Yeah, but you could run from a knife. A bullet will catch your ass. Yeah, you you can get away from this. <laughs> no, that's a little different. But, but yeah, that's what that's really what I I meant. I because I see the benefits in both. So but just the wondering. thing is, in segregation, there's no interaction. Now segregation, in other words, I stay over here. I stay over here, but I still. Um, you know, interact from time to time. Just when the temptations come to town, maybe you guys get the damn get the down. Down. I feel it. Yeah, but no, I mean, you you learn you you learn from other cultures, etc. But when the other culture is dominant and and tries to hold you down, no, not can't deal with segregation. But you know, you have segregation still all over the place. You know, what about Chinatown? I think I think we have a self. Yeah. Self-induced you know, uh, segregation at but this no, point. What I'm saying is, it's like when, okay, you had Chinatown in mm -hmm. Seattle, okay? Now, when all the other Asian people started going around, they said, well, we're going to call it the International District Chinatown. I said, hell no. It's going to be Chinatown because it's always been Chinatown. So now it's Chinatown International District. But they didn't get rid of Chinatown. Still a form of segregation because everybody mostly in that area speak the same language, they, ha they share the same culture, they allow other people there, there's a bunch of white folks, there's a bunch of black folks that live in Chinatown, but it's still Chinatown. Mm -hmm. and, and in a sense the rules are different. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I say, separate but equal would be much better as far as, as, far as the way it was, where you have one group that has everything and is trying to prevent this other group from not having anything. Yeah. So different forms of segregation. Well, and e even is segregation the right word? Are we looking for a better word? I see. Would, does it bother you who lives next to you if they have your same values, morality, uh, attitude towards crime, your kids get together, play mm -hmm. together? Um, would it matter to you if you had the same values, more or less? Okay. You know My mom grew up in North Carolina. She moved up here when I was in the fourth grade. So she was still relatively a young woman. Mm -hmm. She never, ever lost her accent because she was afraid that she would lose the values okay. and the whatnot that she grew up with the culture, whatever. Mm -hmm. So she never, because I asked her about this, how come you, how come you still talk? Uh, because everybody else, we don't talk. Dad doesn't talk. It was because 
She wanted to not. hang on okay. to the culture. And, that, and that's real. That's, yeah, that's, that's real. It's like a lot, it's like a lot of people that I've met from Africa have been in America for decades and they still speak with their accent yeah. and deal with their cultural upbringing. Yeah. I so, think and I I think that's good um for somebody who has roots somewhere to sure. never lose that because sure. uh I'm finding and you guys obviously can attest to this but I'm finding the older I get the more I think about the old old stuff like I hope something's preserved like I want to go look at something that knowledge is mm -hmm. is never going to be seen but mm -hmm. we have to make sure it keeps yeah. going so at the older I get the more I do feel like you you do want to have some tie to your roots um, yes. but in, in response to your question I know the first half I don't I've never cared like neighbors race anything like I don't care I okay I was in the car yesterday and I found myself having a full-blown conversation with myself. I understand it sounds yeah, crazy, but yeah, I yeah. was so irritated at these thoughts. And so this is kind of part of it is I don't like how people live their lives now that the way I have to live my life is to tell you what to do, mm -hmm. to tell you how to be. Mm -hmm. So I have such a strong mindset of mind your fucking business mm -hmm. that... My neighbors up there, I mean, well, they're not here anymore. They got kicked out. But they would, the man and woman was beating on each other, throwing their dogs over the side of the thing, kids running crazy. And I was like, couldn't be me, though. And I went on about my business. Because I am not so much invested in how other people live their lives. That being said, um, that door or that window of opportunity to be around people that are different from you, I think, is invaluable. Um, but I also think that being around your roots, so to say, yeah, sure, yeah. is also sure. invaluable because there ain't never gonna be another you and your family, you and your people. That's, That's right. it. They gonna be all them is gonna be there, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so be, yeah. I again, I see both sides, and I you know what prompted this. We were in South Carolina, and uh, Dudley, what was her name? Dudley's wife, Rochelle. Rochelle asked me. Do I see creatively what I do? I think I would be different. Do I think that all my art stuff would manifest differently if I had grown up in South Carolina as opposed to Seattle? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's an I, interesting question. You know, um, it was crazy. But see, the whole thing is um, a lot of black people left the South and moved north and west and well, northwest because of military and uh, also because of job opportunity. You know, it's like people were coming up here, mm -hmm. getting out of the military, oh, I kind of like it here, whatever, whatever, then they talked to their relatives in the south and, you know, they would migrate. But the whole thing is, there's still going to be that culture shock, mm -hmm. you know, because it, so, it was so weird. We went, my daughter was going to school in Richmond and so we made the trip, you know, to visit and we get her settled, whatever, whatever. And it was so bizarre because everybody in the inner city in all of the services was mostly black. The bus drivers, firemen, policemen, all the clerks in the stores in the inner city. You get outside of the city, you start to see more white folks, mm -hmm. but it was like kind of a culture shock for my daughter because she was born here. She yeah. had never been here. When I, was, when I was a little kid, the only white people we saw were in the store, and then they would leave early and the black people would close it. But everybody around me, we're in the projects, everybody around me, we didn't see no white folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and the yeah. whole thing is that part of that experience is not available to you know in other words to be in a segregated place that experience ain't available yeah and again to, that's that's my question that's a great experience to have yeah i mean it was like you could share stories with people from other parts of the south or other parts of the country <coughs> but you were all you all had that one thing we were all black. 
you know, but when you're born here and you don't go anywhere else, or you're born yeah. in a lot of, you don't, it's a culture shock to go to the deep south. Cultural shock yeah. to come up here. And yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, and and vice time. versa, exactly. Yeah. You know, because when I first came up here, I was fascinated by Asian people. I'd never seen them. And I'm like, yeah. whoa, okay, here's another culture to, to try to find out about. Yeah. You know? a, a little off topic, but I had a guy who I knew moved from Hawaii and came here and it snowed and he almost lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> uh, well, well here, here's the thing. How often do you think it snows? I'm cool? telling you. <laughs> you what are you saying about? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I <laughs> thought about that. Actually, I forgot. But, uh, no. You're not nodding out, though. What? You're not nodding out, though. How do you spell that? N O D nod D D D N O U T. Not now. Not now. Okay, I thought you were doing nodding, and I was like, nope, you're messing up. No, not now. Not now. Not now. Not now. Not now. Not now. Exactly what it was. No, I, okay. Oh, but you forgot what, because he was, yeah. Yeah, so, sometimes you have your train of thought. You have a, uh, a zip, zip, and you, uh, yeah. You're picking up the girls, right? Yeah, okay. unless you want to. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, you already knew that. Right. About five minutes. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Yeah. So yeah, it it was it was a uh, cultural shock, shock, culture shock. There but I was gonna say that even even at the time when I was growing up in the in the South, we lived on a very nice Blanton Street, very nice street houses. I mean. Very nice houses, school teachers, business owners, I mean, very nice houses. In our backyard, to the street to the side, one street over, mm -hmm. and you go down the hill, dirt, it was dirt road, and the city never paved it or did anything, but there were like these row houses, where people lived in these houses, and they had those pot belly stoves in the house for heat. And no grass but dirt leading all the way up to the house. I mean, I remember that. It was all the way down that hill. It was all just on row houses. And, and, and those were the people that I was told, stay away. And, and it, it wasn't like they were evil people. They were just not like us. <laughs> Even though they were yeah. black. You, you did. They was the poorest? Yeah. It was okay, the poorest. don't go around there. That's what it was. Yeah, was that, and yeah. the whole thing is different attitude. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because the thing is, you, you know, it's like when you're living in the projects, well, we're all in the projects. So, yeah. I mean, you can't, you know, I mean, yeah. now you go into it's some people. And I guess in some ways those could have been the projects, except I, I don't think, I knew a couple of the kids that lived out in that area, mm -hmm. and, and they were just kids. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they were unsanctioned projects. No, that's a whole other show. That's a good topic for a right. whole other show. The way we've segregated ourselves. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of history behind that coming up north, coming up through the church, mm -hmm. or coming up through the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. The church is like, just like what you're explaining, they're the poor ones. They don't have shoes, yeah, yeah. but their heart's in the right place to come to church. But look at them, they don't have fun. Yeah, yeah, but they don't come to so, our church. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that's that's yeah. a good that's a, that's a good show. Okay, that's right. Okay, hey, thanks for joining us for this stimulating and sometimes amusing black men conversation. I'm your host, Sweet Sunny, but we'll go with Sweet Sunny for now. <laughs> and you are Gary Gray, Sugar Bear from '69. Bang! And uh, real quick, you kids out there. One thing I want you to take away, since you see, you, you, we're talking about old folks, ask yourselves when you're our age, how do you think you will feel about the way things are going on right now, and, and how would you change them, if, if any? I want to thank also our producer right here, 
for adding value to the conversation because what he said is so important and so real for you young folks. Don't let anybody tell you you're dumb. You're not dumb. But there is a lot of shit out there which you shouldn't have to deal with. I'm going to blame that on us, but make it better. Okay. Thanks for stopping in. And uh, you see us again. God willing, in the creek don't rise. Happy birthday, Lou. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs>